Today, the Biden administration taps into strategic oil reserves uh, while they are shutting down pipelines. We will get into that. Also, Australia actually literally transferring COVID positive people to quarantine camps. They said it wouldn't happen, but it is. And we called it the whole time. We've got all that and more coming up today. And it all starts right now. Hey, welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Today I am joined by Yaku Buyans, Blaze TV contributor and host of the Yaku Buyans show. Thank you for being here Thank as you. always. And I feel like it's been a while. Also joined by Matthew Marsden, uh, actor and producer, and uh, I should say escapee from Hollywood. Yes, I'm free. Freedom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you again. Here in Texas now. Oh, and so yeah. you're like, I have a truck. Really free. I have a truck. Oh, come on. I've got a real truck. Real Texas. Yeah, I'm not wearing <laughs> cowboy boots yet. It's though, okay. Though. We, we'll I'm, take I'm you there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take you there. There are plenty of places uh, that we can get you hooked up. Um, all right. So let's get into this. This is really interesting news. Uh, the Biden administration announced that they are going to tap into the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve for 50 million barrels of oil. They say this is uh, in an effort to bring down gas prices at the pump. Uh, said the move is aimed at global energy markets, but also at U.S. voters who are coping with higher inflation and rising prices ahead of Thanksgiving and uh, winter holiday travel. Um, but, you know, as it were, the, uh, the move will not have an immediate effect. So the government will not move barrels into the market until mid to late December. And not all of the oil will hit the market. So 32 barrels will eventually be, be returned to the reserve, they say, uh, with the other 18 million authorized for sale by Congress. Um, it is really interesting to see this move. I mean, you just in the name, you hear in the name, it is a res reserve, right? A strategic reserve that we are really supposed to use uh, I would say not in times where it's just that the administration has shut down our way of being energy independent. And they're like, oops, well, we kind of caused this thing to happen. We caused the inflation. We caused the higher gas prices. Um, but instead of doing the thing to undo what we did, we're just going to tap into this reserve, which, by the way, we don't have very much of. Uh, the, the United States oil consumption, we'd eat it up it just within a couple days. Um, so then that would be gone. And then I have a feeling, guys, mm -hmm. I have a feeling, I want to get your thoughts, obviously, but I have a feeling that this is a little intentional. Mm -hmm. um, just like, oops, well, now that oil is gone too. We can't control the prices. We tried to talk to OPEC, but they won't listen. So we're really going to have to push for all of this clean, green energy. Uh, and by the way, as an added bonus, it will help with all of climate change and the fact that we're all going to die in 12 years. So they say, do I have that right? Am I, am I off track anywhere? Is this, I, is it, no. I, I know, I know the left will call me a conspiracy theorist <laughs> no, here, but it's right. like, you, I, you see what's happening and you can't really buy anymore. I think that this is by mistake, no. that they don't no. know what they're doing, no. that they're, I know I heard a lot of people today, well, Biden's too stupid to understand. No, no actually, no. well, Biden may be, but I think the administration itself as a whole understands exactly what they are doing here, uh, and they want to make it impossible for us to be able to be energy independent and to be able to have lower gas prices. Look, under Trump, we became a net exporter of energy in this country, mm -hmm. which means our reserves were stocked up. We were, we were flying like a kite. It was amazing. You know, we had pipelines going in and we exported energy so much so that it shut down oil in the Middle East, which brought peace in the Middle East because the fight is over oil. So much so that the Middle East started looking at sport, building sports stadiums in the middle of COVID, brought boxing to the Middle East, world title fighting. And they, they said, hey, we got to build theme parks, right? You're looking at Neom, the new city that's being built in Saudi. They said, look, we're moving away from oil because the U.S. is now stable, right? Now they're going, great, Saudi Aramco. Listen to that name. You'll see Saudi Aramco is going to feature again. And this is how you would do it, Sarah. You shut down your own production. 
You have ample oil under the surface to pump. Go. Let's dig into our reserves. Why? To deplete the reserves, mm -hmm. to completely cripple us, to say we are now completely subservient to Saudi Aramco right. in the Middle East. War is going to go nuts in the Middle East again because they're fighting over territory and oil, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, American people, inflation to the roof, all for what? For the end game. Socialism, because we've got to break the system. This is how you would do it. Yeah, that's all part of the plan, Matt. Yeah, I mean, look, the way I approach these things and I say to people, you know, if they think it's a conspiracy, because that's a conspiracy thing. Yeah, everything it's a conspiracy. is. Yeah. Everything is, even, right. even though everything is coming true that right. they say it's a conspiracy. <laughs> there, there comes a point where you have to go, hang on a second. But you have to look and say, how do I live my life, right? How do I approach things in my life? And does that translate to the way that the government approaches the way they, they deal with things? So if you look at something like toilet paper, right? The crazy talk, nobody went when COVID hit, hang on a second, we've got some toilet paper, that's okay, let's just use what we have, right? Mm -hmm. I know it might seem like a stupid example, but no, they went out and they bought so much more toilet paper, right? They, they, went, they were like, we've got to get more, we've got to get more. If which, which always blew my mind because COVID was not a... Yeah. Like no, a and, <laughs> and, and like, you know, whatever happened a hundred years ago when we didn't have toilet right, paper, I hate right. to tell you, but there are other alternatives. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is you don't go into, it's sensible, even that's why you have food in the freezer if you're smart, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You don't go into your reserves while there's other stuff out yeah. there that you can get. That's just human nature. Right, and, and again, even though that was an extreme example, whatever people had then, yeah, that's true. they showed it by going out and trying to get as much as they can. So what we did was we ramped up the, the drill, we drill, 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 baby, that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everything kind of calmed down. Right, everything, like you say, especially in the Middle East, and people, you know, don't give Trump the credit for that, of what he did over there, which, mm -hmm. including this, was more of a holistic stabilization mm -hmm. of that, but you know, not that anyone cares about anything that goes on over there or, you know, like trafficking or, mm. you know, abusive people. But, you know, they're not looking at things like you would, how you would in your own life, right? Mm. So, absolutely right. They're depleting down. You, you, can't, you can't look logically and say that this is a a winnable strategy for us. Yeah. There, there's, yeah. no, there's no net positive for us by depleting our own strategic reserves mm -hmm. when, we have, when we're sitting on a massive pile of oil. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. you say that, and I agree with you, but I would counter with it is a net positive for them, for them. because right, they right. don't care about you. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. Uh, they don't care that we have to pay more at the pump. They don't care that we have to pay more at the grocery store. They don't care about these things because if it will get them to their end goal of the Great Reset, really, of everything, you know, um, then it, the, the ends justifies the means. And it doesn't matter that they're hurting the little people along the way. And there it is, right? The end justifies the means. However, we need to get to driving this country to its knees and controlling the people and stripping away from it, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. We will coerce them, we'll bribe them, we'll defraud them, we'll threaten them, we'll bring fear, we'll deplete resources because that's the goal. And that party, that mindset, it's one mindset. It is a tribe that goes, end mission is destroy what we hold dear destroy what our founding fathers built by all means necessary. And energy is one. Watch out, yeah. food. Yeah. You watch Gates and watch food. They're going to pull this, this same move. Guys, there's nothing on the shelves. We're pulling into reserves now. You're going to pay $20 for a salad. You can't get fruit. Oh, sorry, we got to import we get, in the tariffs. We're going to break it all down. The guys who control the land now, the largest landowner in the country, agricultural land, Bill Gates, Two and a half million acres, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, they're holding it hostage. You can't. This is how you would do it. This, if you would do it, and you were, if you were Bane in Batman, if you yeah. were Doctor Evil, this is what you would do: deplete the resources, refuse to drill that which is underground. By the way, we've got the largest oil reserve in the world untapped in Alaska. Okay, never even drilled. We can be energy. Uh, we should pay a dollar at the pump today. A dollar. We should feed the world with petroleum. Mm -hmm. In this whole notion of the Green New Deal, we're going to run out of petroleum. There's more petroleum. The Bakken Shell. Go to Dakota. There's so much oil. And the earth keeps producing oil. 
it produces, right? We will not run out. We're not going to run out of petroleum. It's a farce because they can't print money on that. Because when you stabilize the economy and you say, hey, people, energy is inexpensive. Mm. What are they going to control you with? How are they going to convince you that you need green energy, that every car needs to be EV, that you can't drive a car on gas, that you're the evil person? How would they ever convince you of that unless they say, we ran out? Yeah. We, we, we have no more. Yeah. Uh, it, it is interesting, too, because when they talk about their ideas of green energy, um, so seldom you hear uh, about nuclear, which right. really, if right. you really want to talk about actual yes. clean energy, that would be the way to do it. But they have these, you know, they're like, but the windmills, which, you know, failed in Texas and fail all of these other places. And, you know, uh, they, they want to talk about all of these green energies that are basically the most inefficient ways of doing things, the fact that they don't talk about nuclear really makes you realize they just have no clue what they're A talking real solution. about. Right, yeah. right, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, they keep harking back. It's kind of like looking at your computer today and say it's the same as what it was when Chernobyl happened, right? right? <laughs> right. Like, they've, they've conquered that. They've moved that. You can go back and you can take uranium, depleted uranium that they threw in the ground. You can bring it back up and you can renew it now. They can actually use it. So it's not like the way it used to be. And also, if you, if you always have to look at Hollywood, right, for hypocrisy. Yeah. So remember when they're like, yeah, green, we need, we need our, we, our Priuses, our Teslas, our this. But don't you dare put that wind farm off the coast of Malibu because it ruins my view. <laughs> the it view. ruins my view. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, but it's okay to stick it out there in West Texas and all that, you know. But it's, They're it's, also driving the Tesla but taking the private jet every chance. Exactly. Of, of course. Oh my God. Of course. Oh. But the other thing is about this is, and, and ask anyone about getting on a plane right now. Like people, are, I don't want to fly, especially like coming into, you know, Thanksgiving. I don't want to fly. I don't want to this. I don't want that. The prices go up. It's about restricting mobility. And a lot of people don't talk about the fact like you try and go to Europe and not be vaccinated right now. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. And, and coming in, you've got to do you this, You make such this, a good point. I just had two Europeans that came here. They visited on the yeah. show. You saw them from yeah. Poland. They have an actual vax card on an app. They yeah. show their papers, even in their own country when they travel. They show papers. This is, this is Nazi Germany. They literally, on it, they track them where they go on an app. W welcome, America. I mean, other nations are not free. They're yeah. not free. We have freedom here still. We need to defend it like heck. And a lot of that, by the way, is to do with mobility, is to do with the fact that you can get in your car and you can drive wherever you want. And they want to restrict that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is it, what people don't understand mainly in America about Europe is the taxes are so high. Like you see Europeans, they go, <laughs> Americans, yeah, well, of course you're paying like seven bucks a gallon because we've been doing that for forever. Forever, right? Yeah, yeah, with their teeny tiny cars like this. That, right. you, know, you know the Tesla like key yeah. that's like the car? That's how big their cars are over here. Yeah. It's for real. You can pick the car up when you go in the grocery store. Carry it, under your arm. Carry it with you, you know. You we we used it. to in college. We picked, four of us picked a, a professor's car up and stuck it in between two trees. Oh, my god. Don't gosh. recommend it, but it works. Yeah. I, can, I can't possibly see you doing that. You're too wholesome for that, Yako. Well, it was, it was a... It was in college. It was a healthy college prank. I... I, you're forgiven. It was in college. You get a pass. Uh, all right. We're talking about all of this, the craziness going on in other countries uh, coming up. Let's talk about what's going on in Australia. It just keeps getting crazier over there when it comes to COVID and control. First, we want to thank our sponsor, iTarget Pro. So uh, if you have a gun lover in your life and they don't have an iTarget Pro, I'm telling you, this is what you need to get them for Christmas. It is a very easy uh, gift. You can check it off now. Go to the iTarget Pro website and uh, you pick whatever caliber you want to, uh, to get for the firearm. They've got all different calibers and you will get a laser bullet which they can put into their firearm and practice shooting their firearm in the safety of their own home. And as an added bonus, you will not blow any holes through the wall. Because, like I said, it's a laser bullet. So you download the app on your phone. Uh, it will keep track of how great you are, how proficient you are, and your dry fire training. So it's going to help you develop muscle memory, sharpen target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function. It's so much more. You really don't learn your gun until 
you really learn the pull and uh, trigger control. You got to go to itargetpro.com. You can save 10% plus get free shipping with the offer code NEWS. Get this for the gun owner, gun lover in your life. This is going to pay for itself in one time of use with all of the money that you're saving in uh, ammunition and range fees. That is the letter I, targetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code NEWS. Uh, Australia's Northern Territory Chief Minister Michael Gunner has said that the Army is now helping transfer co uh, positive COVID cases and, con and contacts into quarantine camps. Uh, I'm not sure if, I guess we don't have the video uh, of this announcement, but uh, he said that um, they have uh, nine positive cases from <laughs> one of the places wow. and they've got contacts in addition to that what they said what's more concerning is the evidence of substantial mingling between households as well as mingling back and forth between Binjari and the nearby community of Rockhole which has about 130 residents these community these communities have very strong personal and family connections and uh, we do expect these numbers to increase so we took urgent action to escalate our response in these communities, immediately implementing a hard lockdown. Uh, so, you know, in Australia, in this particular community, they only had five reasons, five legal reasons right now, well, legal reasons, uh, to leave their home. And um, so they no longer have those five reasons to leave. They now can only leave for uh, medical treatment in an emergency or if required by Law. Uh, they said they've already identified 38 close contacts that they have to transfer. Uh, the army is transferring into these quarantine camps. Again, I mean, you hear nine positive cases. Right, That's yes, not uh, you're you're taking away people's freedoms and livelihoods over nine positive cases. I just it just blows my mind. And by the way, shockingly enough, just thought I'd add this in here. It is in the story in a. A detail. Uh, their vaccination status has not been confirmed yet, um, but like they're not saying. I yeah. feel like they would immediately say if they were unvaxxed. Correct. Yep. Yep. And remember, New Zealand shutting the country down for one case. Right. One case, and then Australia. And I remember I was sitting in this chair. Eric July was sitting there, and we were saying, "Hey, there's concentration camps. They're talking concentration camps. You know, like vaccine. You know." Se you know, sequestering camps in, in New Zealand and Australia. People are like, oh, you guys are making this up. It's conspiracy. I'm like, okay. I have family right, there. Right. I have family right. in Brisbane, in Adelaide. You know, in, that's what I'm saying. In, in it's Perth. always a there. That's it's, always where they go. You're a right? conspiracy theorist. Yeah. No. It's actually if you hear something today and you think it's conspiracy, that's exactly what is going on because it's just logical people thinking, using their brain, right? And so, so this is it. We we have to ask ourselves serious questions in this country. We have examples. If someone warns you and say, listen, there's a cliff. Do not walk down there. And you walk down, you fall off the cliff, it's on you. They're shouting. The Australian people, the same people are shouting. Don't do this. Do not allow them to take your guns. Do not allow them to shut you down. Do not allow them to max vaccinate. Force, don't do this, America. You, and, and we still have so many people, even conservatives today, yeah. even Christian conservatives that are just like sheep just following the trend and just go, government's good. They're all good. I'm telling you, you can't count on two hands good people in government in this country. There's so few, so few that when the jig is down will actually surrender their lives for the people mm -hmm. and defend the people. There's so few, right? It is power to the people. Take power back. You have to make change in your community. And yes, that looks controversial. It looks like you showing up at a school board meeting and possibly being thrown out by the police. Yes, it means you're going to cause an uproar. That we are at that place. Yeah. It's, it's that time. Yeah, it, well, it's interesting, too, just to kind of tack on to what you said there, Yaku. Uh, we have, I know I've seen it in Australia. They're beating the crap out of their own residents for being outside. I think I just saw one from, I believe it was Austria, but another place. Uh, and they're doing the same thing, beating the crap out of them for their safety, though. Mm. Matt, just for, it's safe. for their health yes. and yeah. safety that they're beating the crap out of well, them. Well, you know, I mean, look, is, and, and we're both immigrants, right? Yep. Um, God bless the Constitution of the United States, yeah. right? I Amen. mean, it really is amazing. And God bless every single person that has stood up for Second Amendment rights yep. because it is never, and you can, 
I'm going to say never, but you know, that's the thing that I love about Texas, right? Yeah. These people are like, you are not taking my guns. There's a memory, right, about what happens. It's, it's, it's just something that is ingrained in Americans, I believe, mm -hmm. that, and freedom as well. I mean, you know, we know, we come in, people talk about freedom, and, and even in, in our countries, like, you know, Americans are mocked for like freedom and freedom, and there you go, oh, hang on a minute, where, where are we looking? Yep. Yep. And it's not, by the way, people aren't looking at America anymore. They're looking at Texas yes. and Florida yes. and, and DeSantis and, and these, that's Absolutely. where they're looking, right? Yeah. That's where, and people all around the world are seeing this, mm -hmm. right? It's so important that we look back and we thank the people that have stood up for gun rights and, and they have, they've been pillared and, and had all these horrible things said about them and, and Dana Lash, for example, who has mm -hmm. been hammered mm -hmm. for doing what she does and, and we should really like, thank them because look at what we've got now and it's so much more than the gun they want to make it the gun it's not the gun it's like if i can bear arms by the constitution by my right and i can defend myself it means at some point when you're coming for me you have to think twice mm -hmm. you can't just storm me mm -hmm. because i can hurt you too okay and so and that that hesitancy puts people in check yeah it puts the government in check what is the check in australia today Zero. There's an actress that was in my most recent show that really, she's stuck because she's not an American citizen yet, but she was here on, a, on, a, on an 01 working visa. She went there to go shoot a show in New Zealand, shut the whole country down. They move her out of New Zealand because she's from Australia and w good luck, stuck. And, and, and you ask that person, would you rather be in the United States? In California even, which has infinitely more freedom even than Australia. And mm -hmm. then you look at Texas, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, so goes Texas. We can say Florida, we got a little healthy competition. But so <laughs> goes Texas, so goes the United States. And oh, DeSantis, you're great. Maybe Abbott should step up to your level a little bit. Yeah, I, it's, both of you are correct, obviously, but it is interesting. You do hear the, uh, the people always mock the idea of freedom, and they, they say, you know, oh, for, I, on Twitter, free dumb, like D-U-M-B, as if we're the, just these Neanderthals who yeah. walk around just saying the word freedom, walking around with guns and think that we're something. Um, but it is a coincidence that that type of stuff is not happening here, at least for now. It's not a far stretch to say if we hadn't had uh, our own protection, why wouldn't the Biden administration start implementing all of the other things that all of the other countries are doing? Why wouldn't they? They've already proven that they don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about any of the laws. Yeah. So what would be stopping them other than that? Well, that's why, and we were just speaking earlier on, that the Rittenhouse trial was so important. Yes. I mean, it, it, it yeah. was a real moment for America. And, you know, I think we're, we're all sitting there going, because every step of the case on that, if you watch that, that trial, that there's no doubt that he was in his trial. Right, I mean, there's right. no doubt. And everyone that comes out and says, oh, is this not, are you, the first thing goes, did you watch any of it? Yeah. Any no. Of it? No, none of them. But that was um, American freedom on trial. It wasn't just about him. Absolutely. It was about our ability to fight back against tyranny. And people mock it. Well, guess what? It's happening right now in Austra Australia, you know, the land of surfboards. And all right, like, you know, I, I joke the other day, it's like, there's now 10, 10 of the deadliest things in the world that can kill you, including your government now, because they are, who would have thought Australians would have flipped like this? They're, they're the most laid back people and they've just like collapsed like a flan in a cupboard. Just like, yeah, but years ago when everything was tranquil, very silent in the night, and there was, no, there was no noise, they just took their right to bear arms away. And they're like, I don't use it anyway. Yeah, we're, why we're would you need here. it? Why I don't you need, need it. it. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, until the day comes and they go, knock on the door, show me your vax card. Yeah. Let's throw you in a concentration camp. Let's well, think, rip families apart. No, it's real, Sarah. Yeah. It's and Jordan real. Peterson said this, I think, some time back, because I went to see him twice, and, and he talks about what happened in Nazi Germany. And we all think, and I, I hate making that, because everyone's like, Nazi, and you're like, oh, please. <laughs> but there comes a point where you go, there are parallels. And he said that um, people think that they would stand up against the brown shirts, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't. 
-hmm. the majority of people wouldn't. And they didn't. We this were is seeing that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly the same. It's yeah. the, the intention behind it. Because it comes from the same playbook. It comes, comes from a Marxist playbook. It's not different. The mentality and, and the methods are the same. It's the, sa it's the same way of indoctrination. Okay, he used gas chambers, he used other things, but it's still, show me your papers. I'm going to restrict your freedom, restrict your travel, I'm going to profile you. What are they doing? If you're white in this country today, you're profiled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're yes. profiled. You need to apologize for being white. As if you had a choice coming out of the womb, you could pick a color, <laughs> right? It's like, you know, it's insane. But that is how they do it. And unfortunately, most will not stand up. And that's my outcry is you've got to be the few. You got to be one of those that'll stand up and go. I'm going to make noise. Yeah. Uh, all right. We've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. So um, I am so excited. I again, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. I, I, but I've, there's, they've got some new flavors coming out. You're going to freaking love them. I am already obsessed with them. Uh, I was. I can't stop eating them, honestly. But I don't feel bad about it because I'm not going to expand my weight line. That's the thing with Built Bar is that they are protein bars, so they're healthy for you, but they also taste like you're eating a candy bar. So you're going to think that you should feel guilty, but you don't have to. They're all made uh, with real chocolate, and they come in a variety of really, really awesome flavors. So if you need a snack, uh, really, during the holiday season, you really do need a snack that you can grab that's low-calorie, low-carb, high fiber, high protein. It'll keep you from snacking on things you shouldn't be snacking on. You got to go to built.com. If you use promo code news 15, you'll save 15% off of your first order. That is promo code news 15 over at built.com. Uh, Democrat and well, big fan of the show. I think representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, targeted what she claimed was excessive cash bail sought by prosecutors in the New York City court system. This was, of course, just after, I think it was a day, after uh, a man in Waukesha, 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 that's how you say it, Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, ran over dozens of people at a Christmas parade while he was, of course, out on what was determined to be inappropriately low bail. Uh, there, the, here's the tweet that she wrote. Today we sent a letter with Representative Maloney and Representative Raskin to NYC's five district attorneys requesting information on excessive bail in the New York City court system. When prosecutors seek excessive cash bail, it results in increased rates of incarceration, particularly for low-income defendants. More than 75% of individuals in custody haven't been convicted of a crime and are confined in unsafe conditions simply because they cannot afford cash bail, condemning thousands of individuals to languish in such environments as they await trial is unacceptable, she says. Uh, I mean, really, I, I don't think you could be more tone deaf than Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, uh, this man that we, I just mentioned, of course, charged with five counts of uh, intentional homicide and uh, what was there, 48 additional injuries in this. And he had been charged with or convicted on a ton of charges uh, over the past 22 years, including battery, domestic violence, cocaine possession, resisting arrest in several jurisdictions in Wisconsin. And earlier this month, uh, he was arrested for allegedly, oh, you know, just punching his child's mother in the face and, by the way, running over her with his car, hitting her with his car at a gas station. Uh, he was later released on a thousand dollars bail. And then we see what happened afterwards. Uh, Casio Cortez says the solution is simply to just make it easier for people to make bail uh, and get out of jail so that, I don't know, so that they can go and commit more crimes, I guess. Hard to understand. Yeah, I'd like to, I would like to hear from her what is the number, because you just said $1,000. Also remember, this is the same jurisdiction that let pedophiles out on the street with no bail. They get arrested day off, fingerprinted. I think she'd and, prefer that. And they walk day off mm -hmm. with a 90-day hearing date to come see, you know, you know, the court and nobody shows up. It's like a zero percent show up. So that's what she wants is we should be allowed to commit crime. We should take the guy who punches the mom in the face and we should make it easier for him to go mow people down, which, by the way, have hit her work with a car before. This is what they want. They want no bail. This is not even a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars for punching a woman in, a, in the face. A, a, a previously convicted Individual. Right. Yeah, it's not like this it is was just repeat some offense. Random, this is not the first yeah. kid who has, you know, a gram of marijuana 
on college campus and he gets arrested and okay, th I would even there go, you slap a serious bell on that kid, why? There's consequences. These people, these trolls, these fakes, these frauds like AOC, they want no consequences. That's what that's about. We want to rob, steal the American people blind with zero consequences. We want to run the show and we are of, of a higher order mm -hmm. and, and, or those who follow us because it's all, it's, it's all posturing to say, look, do you see black community? We say no bail. You should vote for us because if you get caught punching a woman in the face, we say you should walk. If you mow them down with a car, we say your bail should be, I don't know, less than $1,000, right? Mm. Juxtapose that with Kyle Rittenhouse for a minute. Yeah. This guy drove a car, children, right? right? No, no, bail's too high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I always feel like I go down a few IQ points when I read any of her <laughs> tweets, right? She, she's just colossally dumb. And I do, I do, like, you've got to give it to the American system that you can be so stupid and rise to those heights, right? I mean, she is consistently wrong. But I think that, that, that that's to say the least. I mean, it's kind of like, remember that picture, like, you know, she did with a dress? I mean, listen, she's, yeah. she's, she's, a, she's a good looking woman, right? But she's there with a the dress, like this, with all the other people with, the, like, this army of people around her with masks on. Matthew, like, I'm sorry, yeah. there's nothing good looking there, bro. <laughs> no, well, you the know. The IQ has to be at a certain level to, be, to qualify good looking. He's trying to be kind. He's trying uh, to be well, you kind. know, I'm trying to find some kind yeah. of redeeming quality to her. But, <laughs> but here's the thing, it's, Massive gaslighting, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just huge. It's you, you, right now we're in a situation where it's like, if it saves one life, you must wear a mask. And then you see all these vaccine injuries, and it's just like, oh. anyway, squirrel, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with this, right? We're for law and order. We we want law and order, but you know we're going to get rid of all the police, right? And then we're not going to allow you to defend yourself, mm -hmm. right? And then we're going to let these criminals out. And it's just a constant barrage on the American people. And I am, I'm surprised that someone hasn't snapped, right? Someone hasn't gone, because you haven't really heard anything like that recently with, with being locked down for such a long time and all these other like, little gaslighting things that happen. Yeah, we, uh, we've had a lot of collateral damage. My thing, Sarah, I want to ask you is, what does she actually stand for? Because it's not, it's, it's time to, she's not even with her own party. She's like on an island, yeah. this woman, with her, the squad, right? Yeah. But what does she actually even stand for? I mean, it's like whatever the day is. Right, right. Well, let me well, let me give you this, because this all this is you mentioned the squad. One of her fellow members of the squad, uh, Rashida Tlaib, was actually asked in uh, an interview with Now, this is Axios. So you would think would be pretty is Axios on HBO, a, a friendly, you yeah. would think, to uh, a member of the squad. So Rashida Tlaib was asked about all of this, uh, you know, the, the not just bail reform, but really a prison reform bill that she supported, that the squad supported, that would just release everyone. Here's what that looked like. In 2020, you endorsed a, uh, the BREATHE Act, which yeah. is a series of proposals to transform America's criminal justice system mm -hmm. and create, quote, a roadmap for prison abolition. The BREATHE Act proposes emptying federal detention facilities within 10 years. To what extent have you wrestled with any potential downsides of releasing into society every single person who's currently in a federal prison? Yeah, I, again, I think that everyone's like, oh my God, we're gonna just release everybody. That's not that's what, what the Yeah, is. but did you see how many people are meant to be in prison right now? No, I know, but the act that you so endorsed we're gonna keep, we're actually gonna, says release everyone in But 10 in 10 years. years, but think about it. Who will release But there people? are, like, human traffickers. Oh, I know. Child sex. So but you're saying, do you mean that you don't actually support that? Because no, you endorse the bill. No, I endorse the BREATHE Act and looking at federal uh, the policies and how we incarcerate. Absolutely. But, Oh man, yeah, like, that is awkward. You love it, to see it though. It's so amazing. Yeah, which, I love it. Play that. Like, put that on loop. That I can watch yeah, all day long. Yeah, she's like, uh, he says, but you literally it calls for them to be released. Well, yeah, but within the span of ten years. Yeah. So it doesn't. That doesn't count. Please, I mean, it's it's oh, just like what you were saying, come Matt. On. That it's just like what you were saying that like. <laughs> come well, but, on. But, but human traffickers. She's yeah. like. Yeah. 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 She kind of gave us a laugh like our vice president gives us a laugh. It's some awkward. Look, that movie is called Watch the Worm Squirm. That's the, <laughs> and I love that movie. Her, it is, whenever you pin him like that, just a straightforward question. And that's kind of what you said. Release yeah. everybody. Yeah.
Ah, but mm. it's like an episode of The Office, right? Like you said that. <laughs> yeah, but didn't you say that? Well, I kind of. Yeah. Oh, come on. They're only rapists. You know what I mean? Come you on. Know the thing. You know the thing. Hey, their leader can get away with it. Why can't they? Yeah, you know? Well. But you have a complicit media. Grandpa right? Joe. Yes. That should be the, the number one story of the day. All across the world, yeah. actually. Yeah. You know, we're going to just release people. Because think about this. It's not just the people in there. It's the people that just went rampant through, uh, where was it they just went crazy and, and, and ransacked all these stores? Was it like There's San 20, Francisco? 20, 20, San Francisco, yes. 25 cars, shut down the street, ran yeah. into Neiman Marcus. And it happened like four or five and times. And they died. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so there's no deterrent anymore. Yeah. No and consequence. It, and then it goes back to, again, the Carl Rittenhouse case, mm -hmm. right? Can you defend yourself? Yeah. And okay. by the way, I want to say this. When I was in California, the biggest pressing thing for me was to get a concealed carry. Like I, and by the way, there's been multiple shootings near where I, I lived, including when my, my friends were picking up their kids. There was, a, there was a, a gang shooting like in Pasadena, right? Which is insane. But since I've moved here, I don't, I don't think about that at all, right? Because there is a semblance of law and order mm -hmm. in this state. And we are in a bit of a bubble actually here. We are a little bit like, you know, when we have to understand the way that it is in other Outside, states yeah. around the country, yeah. Yeah. right? So this is evil, actually. I mean, this is, this is absolute evil, what she's saying. I mean, the impact, not only the, like you say, the deterrent of people that are going out and they're like, I don't care, I'm gonna get let out anyway. You know what I'll do, I'll do like, Six months inside, I'll get all jacked and I'll come out and, and do it again. No, they walk day off. They want uh, to walk day off. So I want to I want to take a quick break, but I think the uh, the next story that I'm gonna I'm gonna present to you guys I think goes right along with this. Uh, you're not gonna want to miss it. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Enemies Within the Church. This is a new documentary film that is out right now. It is called, like I said, Enemies Within the Church. It is a film that the compromised evangelical establishment does not want you to see. It exposes the people who are selling out the church to postmodernism. And of course, they wouldn't be doing it without all of that money behind it. This postmodern takeover within Christianity includes agendas that we know as, you know, we talk about it all the time on the show, social justice, intersectionality, critical race theory, and neo-Marxism. It is obviously really dangerous to the fabric of our faith, and this film exposes the enemies that are coming into the church and the trap that they have set for the rest of us. To understand the way out of that trap, we got to understand how we fell into it, and Enemies Within the Church helps to do this. Yaku, I know you do a lot of work uncovering a lot of this kind of thing mm. happening in schools, happening in churches. It is happening everywhere, everywhere, even the places that you would think is not, it's not happening, it would never happen, it's happening. All right, I encourage you to go buy the DVD or purchase the uh, PPV streaming at enemieswithinthechurch.com. That is enemieswithinthechurch.com. Uh, so the Colorado Sex Offender Management Board voted on Friday to do away with the term sex offender. This is, uh, you know, due to the negative impacts that it has on sex offenders. Like, I mean, you can be a sex offender, but if someone calls you a sex offender and it gets really, really offensive. So the board voted 10 to 6, I'm laughing so I don't cry here, to change the term to adults who commit sexual offenses uh, in its standards and guidelines for the assessment, evaluation, treatment, and behavioral monitoring of adult sex offenders. So this applies to their standards. Um, like I said, you know, we're talking about all of these. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe we're letting out rapists, but what? who are we to say what is rape, really? Well, yeah, the, I mean, they're sex offenders, but let's not call them that. Let's not call them that. We might hurt the sex offenders' feelings. We live in bizarre world. I know, I we, mean, do. we do. We well, really do. Well, it reminds me, you know, you keep bringing everything back to the Rittenhouse case, and it does remind me of, you know, Joseph Rosenbaum. The left is turning him into some hero, some martyr, and it's like, he was a child rapist. Yep. Well, rest in peace. That's what uh, Pedro Pascal oh, you know, you know, says. Yeah, you know those pictures of him and the other yeah. guy like, like, like this? Like they're little like angels. That. So what? Let's give him a statue. Yeah. Right? I mean, what Truly. is going on? Truly. Yeah, built a statue. Give yeah. me the hammer. I'll go knock it down. <laughs> Here's the deal, though. What I want people to serious ramifications, right? We have law in this country. So the laws written in, in, we fought in Boulder, Colorado is an absolute disaster. 
talk about needles on the street, more homeless than you can imagine. Colorado is in so much trouble, okay? But there's a national sex offender registry in per state as well. So if you don't call it sex offender anymore, that regist registry is gone. gone. So they're yeah. not gonna register in Colorado. So here's what's gonna happen. The child rapist is gonna move in next door to you who just voted for this, the child rapist. And you're not gonna know that it's a child rapist who we hunt every single day because you wanna be woke and change the name. But what you didn't think about is by changing the name, you say, basically say to them, we don't need to nullify the law. We just relabeled it and it no longer falls under the statute. He's not a sex offender. He's, he's an adult with some sexual you know, offenses. He's not a sex offender. So they're not gonna register them. They're already not registering in New York. There's so many states right now that's trying to get guys who are convicted child rapists not to register. So they're gonna move in next to you. He's gonna become your little league coach. You're gonna have your you, you know, 83,000 cases of you know, molestation in, in, in Boy Scouts of America. That's what the result's gonna be and then we get the phone calls, help me, help me, my son was molested. And we go, you idiot, you voted for the guy to move in next door to you, to become the little league coach, to become the teacher at your son's school. Mm -hmm. People need to start thinking ahead in this country. Everything you do, what you do in secret echoes in eternity. These things have serious ramifications and they know how to do it. They know it's not comprehensive sex ed, it's child health care. Oh, that's okay. No, but ask what you're teaching. Oh, we're still teaching you know, sodomy, we're just calling it something else, but it's not that, mm -hmm. no, no problem. Mm -hmm. This guy's not a sex offender. He's raping children, yes, but he's just an adult with a sexual problem. Right, right. yeah, well, right, because one of the, one of the sex offenders says, I, well, I shouldn't have to carry the label for life because I, that, that, uh, that offense I committed a long time ago, and that's yeah. like a lifetime ago, and I'm I shouldn't have to. I'm all for they shouldn't have to carry it for life. Their life shouldn't be. <laughs> I can't say it, right, because I get well, into trouble. You, but no, well, you're saying, saying, carry it for I'm just life. saying. Yeah, carry it for life, but it should be a short life. It should yeah. be a very, very short <laughs> very life. Shortened. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Shouldn't yeah. say. it, they, they shouldn't have that. And that, especially for pedos and all that, I'm sorry. Good night. It's, yeah. it's, what is more vile than a human being that's defending a child rapist? The, I, I can't think of a single thing more vile. I can't. Well, what we have, we, we have this kind of, it used to be that we had morality, right? We, we had an objective morality. And what we have now is subjective. So, so what you have is you have a, a, a bunch of people over here that they, they believe this one thing and they look at this other group and they go, hey, hey, you, you support me? You'll support me in my, in my um, dysfunction? Well, I'll support you, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what happens is they build this kind of house on sticks by supporting each other in whatever dysfunction they have. Instead of going and saying, hey, listen, I have, I, I'm broken and I need to... I, I need, need help. To, yeah. yeah, I need help. I've got to fix it. They go, no, I'm just going to double down on it because he'll support me, he'll support me. And then reality bites. Exactly like you said, someone has a child and their child gets molested, yeah. and then they're like, "Who's gonna, who's gonna help me?" You're like, well, uh, you, you took out, you took away all the mechanisms, right. all right. the tools that I had yeah. to, to deal with you. this. I, exactly. I, I hate this is a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I hate to cut it off, but we got to take a break. We'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally you should see your life, your faces when I went. They shouldn't have it for no, life. I, you both yeah, Hey, if you have not yet gotten your ugly Christmas sweater, your Let's Go Brandon ugly Christmas sweater from the Blaze Media shop, there is still time. You can go to <laughs> shop.blazemedia.com. Get 20% off with uh, my promo code. It is news20. Not only will you get something that you can wear for Christmas that will annoy the crap out of your liberal family members, you will also be helping me win a contest against the fellow men here in the building. Uh, and I think we're in the lead, guys. We're in the lead. So we've got to finish strong. Make sure to use that promo code. There's a bunch of really cool stuff, by the way, at that uh, Blaze Media shop. We've got a bunch of merch. Make sure you check out all of it. Uh, but it is shop.blazemedia.com promo code news 20. I've also wanted to sweeten the deal. So send me a screenshot uh, of your receipt showing that you use that news 20 promo code and you will be entered into a contest to win more free merch. So you're welcome. All right. Make sure to go there. Thanks guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you.